Hello YouTube, it's Matt here and today I'm going to be installing a water sensor into a ceiling void uh, behind the plasterboard and up in, up in the joists. Um, this is something that I haven't actually seen anyone do before. I see a lot of people putting in water sensors that are under their washing machine, you know, like maybe battery powered water sensors. On this occasion, obviously it can't be battery powered because it's not going to be accessible, at least not easily, and so it will need to be wired. Um, and the idea of this is that when there's a leak from one of the bathrooms above, and it's a five storey building with the lower two storeys um, are going to be our uh, home. And so when there's a leak from above, it might come from an area where the boiler's installed and there's lots of plumbing there. You know, it could be a feed to the toilet above or it could be a feed to one of the sinks or the shower drainage or anything like that. Um, when there's a leak, it's going to hit this water sensor, that's my, my aim, and then it's actually going to cut out the water supply to the house. Now, there's loads of solutions out there and there's loads of videos that have covered that and they're off the shelf solutions. Some of them have got subscriptions. Obviously, I'm not going to be going down that route. And um, the route I'm going down is um, a little 12, 12 volt sensor, which I'll show you, which is connected to an Arduino uh, remotely. Um, the Arduino is remote, that is. Um, and then I've got some water supply valves that are um, powered by 12 volt that basically you can turn the water supply off using a 12 volt feed. And I'll show you all of this stuff and I'll walk you through what I'm gonna do. But really the difficult thing for me has been working out where to put the water sensor so that I know that it's gonna get wet um, when there's a, a leak that you know comes down multiple stories into a ceiling. Um, but I'm gonna talk you through the process and yeah, let's go. So I thought I'd bring you into the hallway, which is, uh, had a little mini makeover, um, because this is where the water supply comes in, um, under the floor here. Actually, there's a floor level below, um, which is called the lower ground floor. Um, so that's in the ceiling of that level. And water supply comes in here, and we've got these two little um, solenoid valves here, um, and a water valve control here, which is... Uh, I'll talk to you that in a minute. These are all my little creations. So first of all, I'll just show you the water valves. I think it's under here. No, it's not that one. Is it? Yeah, this is it. So, see the blue pipes coming in? This actually had to be fireproof, so there's fireboard on the other side of that. And it's all uh, in there. It's a bit dirty at the moment, but yeah, you can see um, we've got a first floor and a second floor supply. So they are for the floors upstairs. Um, you see the wires coming out of that and they essentially feed into my little Arduino Nano water valve controller. Um, and the, sorry about that. The water valve controller, um, as I say, it's got an Arduino Nano. This is just a little box. I think I bought it from Screwfix and I've got put some rubbishy veneer wood, which I just didn't even bother gluing. I just screwed into the box and I can turn the water supply on and off via these two buttons for each floor. Uh, it's got a network cable coming out and that is accessible over MQTT, uh, which is pretty cool. So it's actually a very simple sketch, um, which, you know, it accepts incoming MQTT messages and basically turns the water valves on and off. And it also reports back the status as you could imagine. So basically, yeah, that's what happens. Uh, the water supply. Yeah, I'm making mead, which is honey wine. Um, that's why there's all that honey. Anyway, basically, uh, that's what happens here. Water supply comes in here and it can be turned on and off via MQTT. So here's a little show and tell of the area that we want to protect. And um, these are just normal floors above us here. But the area of reduced head height here is a mezzanine and it's a bathroom and above this one bathroom here there's another floor with another bathroom like kind of kitchenette bathroom thing and above that there's another bathroom so there's actually three stories starting here one two and three um so to give you an idea we've got a boiler that acts for the first floor um, above here and so there's loads of plumbing up there that could fail um we've got general bathroom kitchen waste here p-trap We've got a stack there. Um, what has happened in the past is that the top floor, um, which is a residential bathroom, bathroom um, the little feeder pipes to the taps 
don't know if you know those silver braided pipes. Um, the hot one burst and water came out at a rate of knots for about 10 minutes before we even realised. And by the time we got downstairs, and this was when we were in as well, by the time we got downstairs, the whole of this was kind of flooded. Now, you can see at the moment we've got temporary ply down, it didn't really matter. Um, but now it's, uh, you know, we started to board up down here, as you can see. So we really don't want water damage any point from now onwards. Um, because that would be a problem. So how am I gonna do this? Well, I'm not able to know if there's water coming uh, down at all points in the ceiling, unless I just put sensors everywhere. Um, you can get sensors that you have a little wire that you can run along, you know, a long, a long wire that will sense along the length of the wire. I don't actually have that. Um, and I don't think that's the best approach here. Um, the best approach that I have got in my mind is to take this P-trap, which is, you know, particularly vulnerable to uh, leaking over the years. Um, I mean, obviously, it's been tested thoroughly now and I plan to keep on top of that. But the point is, you know, you just never know what happens in the future. Um, so I'm going to actually put this here sheet of plywood, which is nine millimetres thick. And it's got additional kind of lips of plywood on the edge. And I'm going to basically cover it in membrane using staples. And these little bits at the edge, I'm going to lip the membrane up there. And I'm going to do the same on this side. And at the ends, although I've got cutouts for the joists. I haven't done this one yet, but basically that goes there. That goes there, I think. No, it's the other bit. Um, and they're screwed in at the moment. I might just silicon them in as well, just as a double security. Um, but I'm going to put membrane over that. Um, that whole thing is going to go up and it's going to cover the um, this joist bay here. And it's going to kind of overlap. I've got some interesting um, structural arrangements going on here. Um, it's going to overlap. And it's going to come to here and to here. Um, OK, so if water leaks here it's not going to be got necessarily by this. But the idea is that I might at a later date put water protection in the floor above. But for now, I really want to capture this because this is, um, you know, possibly a problem. Um, so water would potentially, potentially drop down onto my plywood. Um, the plywood is actually going to go just on the face of this joist here. And the reason I'm lowering, it's already very low head height, uh, but the reason I'm lowering it more is actually, because if you, you do a laser measure here, um, this is uh, at a certain height, but this is already 10 mil higher. So I can get away with another nine mil of ply on there because I have to block the rest of it out by 10 mil anyway. So um, yeah, so that's the plan. Um, and then I'll just show you my sensor. Um, so this is the sensor that we've got. Um, it's really really nicely built and i actually haven't connected this up to an arduino yet um, but i have a lot of confidence in it because um a couple of guys on the forum on the discord actually and um, for oxrs project um have got these things um shout out to ben if he's watching um and have recommended these um which i bought on aliexpress they seem really nicely built you can see that they've got um, a screw hole there and a screw hole there so technically you could actually screw it down um so let's say once i've got membrane on here i could actually screw that down here um and then make sure it would never move but i don't think i need to and i'll, I'll talk you through why as well um it's got this potting compound here out of which two little probes poke um it looks really well built doesn't it and i think it's actually got a tamper sensor in there not that i'd need that but um, so it's got a movement sensor, a reed switch or something like that in there. Um, the design of it, by the way, this is very cheap, about 10 quid each. Um, and it runs on 12 volts. So let's just have a look at the connection. Um, I don't, I haven't actually looked into which connections there are. So I guess this is a 12 volt supply. I don't know if there's active electronics in here. There must be, I guess. Uh, 12 volt supply, black and red. And then I guess, I don't really know what the others are. I'll find out. Um, that's not of concern and that shows how rugged it is as well. Um, I'll sort that out later. The thing I want to do now is get it installed, but I was just going to demonstrate how these uh, probes sit. 
So if I just put this down like so, we're going to see the light through there. You can see that the probes don't actually touch the surface of the material that it's sitting on. So water would have to get up by, I don't know, I would say a fifth or maybe even a tenth of the height of these little leggy things here. But that's not much. That's a puddle of water. Um, I'm guessing that that's about a tenth. Um, if you can see what I mean, I'll just show what I mean with a little screw. So a tenth of this height here is about the amount that the gap is, maybe a fifth or a tenth. So if we get the old vernier gauge out, in fact, it's just lying on the floor here, poor little thing. Um, this is a cheaper, cheaper vernier gauge. Got quite a few of these on site. They're really great um, for this kind of thing. So let's just measure, get an approximate, approximate value. What are we talking? Let's just go with that. Yeah, two mil. So it's about 0.2 mil, I would say, or maybe 0.5 of a mil. I could probably use this end of the vernier gauge and check it, but not so easily with one hand and the other one holding the... Uh, I can't do that. Anyway, I'm pretty confident we're looking at about half a millimetre of um, water required. So that's really, I think, good enough um, to capture the possibility of a leak coming down this joist bay. Um, what's going to happen to the water when it leaks? God knows. Um, we've got a sewage stack there. Um, I've already plumbed the, or re-plumbed the um, out outlet from the p-trap there into the stack so it joins up in there you can see um i think i might boss into the main sewage stack and then have a dry seal um water trap um sewage trap obviously you can't just kind of put a pipe you can't just put a hole in the sewage trap and then put a pipe up to that little plywood and have a little drain at the end or gutter at the end and go straight in there because obviously smells will come out of that so that's definitely not acceptable or allowed um and it'd be horrible so uh you can get you need a water you need a trap basically um but you can't use a p trap or a, um, a bottle tra actually sorry this isn't a p trap it's a bottle trap isn't it you can't use a bottle trap because they need water in them um regularly to keep them working and when they dry out obviously they stop working but you can get these kind of dry seal traps. I can't remember what they're called, but you can get them. And I don't believe it needs maintenance. Anyway, the idea is that this is going to, uh, this whole area here is going to be boxed out. Um, we have to because we've got a situation with, um, we can't just put plywood straight over on the floor over this bit because there's wires. And of course, up here, we've got this pipe kicks in and needs to go under that joist so basically the idea is we're going to box the whole lot out by quite a lot that's what this is here for ready um and because we've lost so much space um i'm going to install little niches in here with some lighting and make it look kind of sexy and nice um but that also allows me to put a tiny um actually not a tiny just a normal back box in here white so it's not too offensive and it'll be kind of up in the corner i don't think you're going to the eye is going to be drawn to it. And in that back box, um, it needs to be fireproofed because this is a steel. So it needs 30 minute fire lining as well. The detail of which I will, I'm probably going to have to make a fire lined back section to the back box. Um, but I'm going to be able to, should this go wrong or should it need rewiring or something like that, knock that out, get my hand up through the back box and put it you know, grab this and replace it or whatever I need to do. Um, I've also got a network, spare network cable somewhere over here, which I will use that back box to connect the end of this wire to. Anyway, that is my general plan. Um, hope you like this video. I will give links in the description to where you could buy one of these. I um, haven't written the sketch on Arduino yet or anything like that, um, but I'm pretty sure that should be relatively easy to do. 
Um, if any of you have got any experience of these things, um, do let me know. And I'd love to hear your comments. Okay, thanks for watching.